in September 2020, we sold our house in the UK, then moved to Normandy in France, where we bought an ancient French farmhouse with various outbuildings, including an old barn, a small cottage with two woodlands, and three and a half acres of pastured land in a beautiful national park area. Follow us on our journey as Budo and I renovate the farmhouse, manage our land and take on many projects for you to enjoy. Let the fun begin. Hi folks, so we're back up on the field. Um, you see me do these yesterday, these uh, three rows for the lavender. So I just have a look, they look a little bit different when they're dried out. Look, <laughs> look nice though, don't they? Yeah, they're nice and sort of mellow with the with the with the land if you like but anyway i wanted to show you this so i've brought up some of the black gold this is from the second pile which we haven't been using so we're going to start using this to lay on the field um but also so i'm going to put a little bit of this compost all the way through and i'm going to put some amendments down and i'll tell you what they are now sorry about the moving on the camera i've got to move things about right so what we've got we look down into this bucket we got some bone and blood meal here i'm just going to be putting a little bit of this on this is an organic one uh, also some organic chicken pellets for nitrogen uh, so i'll be putting a couple of little so there'll be about say that much in one plant area okay so i want to get all this established for the uh for the roots of the plants when they when they come when the plants come and i pot them in it's already down there ready in the roots for them and also some lime okay so this is uh just to sweeten up the ground a little bit it's a little tiny bit towards acid not noticeable but enough that we will put a bit of lime down so i'm going to be putting in three ingredients in in a ratio mixing into a bucket um and i'm not going to spread it all the way over the amendments i'm just going to spread them in the areas where the plants are going to be so i know that the first plant will go in say there and then the next one will be uh one meter away nearly then one meter away so i'm going to be putting it in that sort of area rather than spreading it all over as long as it's in within the general area of the plant and the plant can use the food if you like um and uh, i sound like i'm an expert with this and i ain't really i just uh you know this is what we did in england uh we used to just feed the plants for and plant them in especially these permanent ones like lavender uh, like we did with our other lavender uh is make sure that they've got good food because once we put this on there this is that uh with the green line the, the woven mesh uh ground cover then it's going to be very difficult to just throw compost at them and throw um, amendments at them. The only way I'll be doing it is by a liquid feed, which I'll be giving the plants once a month, say, uh, while they're getting established and growing on in here. Anyway, so I'm gonna get, get myself set up, put a bit of compost down, and then I'll show you, uh, put, no, sorry, I'm gonna put the amendments on first, and then I'll put a bit of compost over the top of that. So folks, I've got my lime. I've put, I'm gonna do it with a, spread it out, the lime, uh, with this, this here. Cause it, uh, I can shake it about. Where the other stuff I've done by hand, I put the uh, blood fish and bone down there and the uh, pellets, hello Rocky. Come here, come here. That's me Labrador, come here. I bet you're gonna go on the beds, aren't you? No, come over here, come on, good boy. Um, and, I'm going to do it with this so i have to start down the bottom and come up then go back down and come up because the wind's blowing from behind me towards you and uh, i don't want the lime in my face <laughs> so i'll start this now
carry that on, get the free rows done. Uh, you can see I've generally just generally covered the whole bed um, because what's going to happen next is the compost is going to go on top, very thin, and then I'm going to lightly rake the tops flat because they're a little bit domed at the moment. So I'm going to lightly rake them flat when the compost is on and uh, the lime is we want it in a general area rather as a targeted area for the uh, say the pellet and the blood fish and bone uh, there's no good feeding in between the two plants uh, with that but with the lime we're trying to change the slight pH of the, of the land and sweeten it up a little bit so that's why you see we spread it all over anyway I'll uh, carry on doing the lime and then I'll come back to you again when I'm doing the compost okay folks welcome back um, so what I've done now is I've lightly raked this one, the first one I put the lime down on. Um, and you can see I've put the lime on the other two rows as well. All I've done basically is just titivate, if you like, you know, the surface very finely with these, uh, this rake, just to incorporate that into the soil. Ideally, what I'd like is for the clouds to break and have a bit of rain just to push this down a little bit before I put the uh, covers on. But I'm not gonna wait for that. I'm gonna get this on, get the compost on, and then get the covers over. Um, just a quick note on lime. Uh, you need to use the right type of lime, uh, you know, for, for this. And the, the most important thing is you mustn't overdo it with the lime. Um, you mustn't put too much lime on your land. You've got to keep a check and check your pH levels. Once you get up to the pH level of uh, what you everyone wants to grow at, basically, um, don't go and add in more lime. Just keep it, be careful. Take a few years or a year or two and then look at it again. Don't go uh, adding too much lime, throwing in loads of lime at it. There is a ratio uh, per tonne, per square meter, uh, per cubic, uh, sorry, per square acre, uh, which is half a hectare roughly. Um, and there is a ratio, well, how much of a ton you use towards that. Uh, but you can look that up, Google it or something, so you'll find that. But I've done that on a smaller scale. I've just broken it down with maths all the way to what I needed in that bucket to do this three beds, which is 26 meters long. And I'm classing these as a meter wide because I'm spreading it, broadcasting it. So uh, that's three meters by 26 meters, cubic meterage, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to lightly to, uh, rake these over next. I won't do that on video. Once they're done, I'm going to put little piles of compost down, some of the black gold I made, the second pile, uh, not the first pile you've been generally seeing in the videos, but the second pile. I'm going to start using that now up in places like this because uh, it's a little bit more coarser, basically. Anyway, so I'm going to start putting that down in piles. When I've got all the piles down, then I'll put you back on again and show you what I'm going to do. Just lightly rake over again, and that's it really. And then these beds are going to be prepped, ready to be covered. Now, the reason I'm putting all this in here is once them covers are on and fixed down and the little slits are in where the lavenders are growing, you know, like I said earlier, you won't have access to put more compost on there unless I start pulling, peeling it back and trying to feed it under. It's all hard work. So what I'll be doing is, is I'll be I'll be feeding the lavenders while they're growing to get the green going before the flower comes uh, with a nice uh, liquid uh, uh, feeder. Basically, it, you know, it, it, nothing nothing uh, complicated. It'll be very simple. I'll show you when we get to that. But uh, that's my plan for today. Anyway, get this done, then get the covers on. Hi, folks, back again. Uh, I just want to make another point as well. Well, it's two points actually. Uh, the lime, when it, uh, it goes down in this area generally in Normandy, you'll see the farmers, they'll be putting white stuff on the fields. That's lime, basically to sweeten it up. It's a general thing done in this area for quite a vast amount of mileage around here. Um, but the other thing I wanted to point out was going forwards uh, on this farmstead, if you like, is we don't want to have bare soil if we can help it so that is one of the reasons i'm trying to get these covers on uh either keep a tarp down or 
a uh, one of these uh, meshed uh, uh, weed suppressants or cover crops you know keep cover crops down and uh, or crops itself yeah uh, and the reason is is for soil erosion because we 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 we're heading towards organic you know we want to be organic fully and uh, we've got a lovely start here because this land hasn't been farmed for, for 35 40 years uh, it's a neutral ground again and uh, it used to be a farm then but the other thing was is I wanted to say was um, yeah about keeping it covered it is a very important a very important thing to keep all this covered and stop the soil erosion and the reason is is if you look at this bed here I raked this literally 15 minutes ago this bed and it's gone light it's where it's drying out the wind's blowing over the top of it and it's drying that out and it's turned it into a dust same with this one here now that one's a bit darker so you can see the slightly lighter darker darker and that's because i've done that one just now all right and if i left this um in the morning this would be without rain would be very dusty fine and it would start to blow around in the wind and that's how you start your soil erosion because we're going downhill we don't want it blowing away and washing away okay that's why i've made the beds this way so when we get a torrential rain pour it will go down the middles and away okay and keeping it covered that's the key so as soon as i get this compost on i'll show you that bit once it's uh, got the piles in like i said okay folks so i've now put around about 100 litres of compost on each row which is about 10 of these on each row 10 to 11 uh, the buckets so the compost is on the top now and I want all that goodness and everything I've put in there to work its way down I'm going to give it a light rake uh, and then I'm going to start putting the covers over uh, which is the geotech the fiber stuff uh, cover um, I've just got to go and locate some pins to hold it down so I'll do that first and then I'll come back rake this off uh, have a quick cup of tea and then I'll start putting the uh, cover over As you can see now putting the geotech down uh, these two beds are virtually done Tracy's just finishing off covering the edges we're holding it down with I'll show you so every sort of two or three foot we're putting one of these staples in down the edges in parallel with each other all the way down and uh, they're holding it down and we can pull it tight with these as well and then we're banking it back up so it get, keeps it nice and tight um, and then when we start to wood chip again because we've got a ton of it to do we'll start to fill in between these with wood chips as well and they're only off the um, indigenous trees like you know the oaks uh, the old ash uh, hazel uh, so it's a local tree so it won't change the uh, ph of the soil at all because it all grows here anyway anyway so we're just going to tidy that up now and then we're going to start on the next bed put that down you can see the compost is on there and all that nutrients i put in there so looking good it's starting to rain so we're going to crack on for a bit Okay, folks so finally got this finished uh, Tracy came up and gave me a little bit of a hand she just helped me uh, push up the edges of the earth against the um, the bash or the yeah, tech whatever anyway so there's the first three rows done with their paths we're gonna fill them in all three of these paths or four is there uh, with wood chippings as we go as we start to take it down but uh that was a bit of a mission today that uh was more hard work than you actually think you know it's, it's up and down a hill uh you're moving earth and uh, obviously materials 
and pinning everything down and blah 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 anyway i'm not whinging um this is looking really good now i'm really pleased and uh this is the start of the lavender empire <laughs> uh anyway we've got to have so we're gonna have three bays here and then we're gonna have another three here and another three 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 so we should end up with 16 or 18 on that field on this part of the field here we've got a much longer route down so we can have really long uh, beds down there. They'll probably be about uh, 60, maybe 50 to 60 metres long. Uh, whereas these ones are only 26 metres long. Uh, but anyway, tell what you think of that lot. It's looking good, isn't it? So I spoke to the nursery a little while ago when I had a cup of tea. And uh, the plants are all there ready. Uh, and she's recommending that we don't pick them up for another two weeks because they've got a lot of rain coming apparently and the weather's going to start warming up and that's when you want to start planting and that's good for me because that allows all that nutrients and that stuff I put in the ground to uh, work its magic and uh, I was looking at this side here we're thinking that when we clear all this here this brush and this goes quite back far there we're going to have lavender down there as well so we will have a quite a lot of lavender and what will be beautiful is when people do come to stay and visit and you know, uh, visit our lavender fields and come for uh, uh, carpentry classes or whatever, growing, whatever we're doing. You'll come in that road there uh, and you'll come in here along sort of that way and into where we live over there. And uh, you'll look at the lavender as you come in, which will be pretty. Also, uh, we just discussed me and Tracy from that tree there, that oak, we're going to put a uh, picket fence all the way through from up the top of the bank all the way down to the road uh, which is over there and on this side we put a new post and on the road side we're going to have another picket fence through there so uh, it'll tidy it all up we'll clear those um, uh, hazels out and tidy it up a bit we're going to leave the oak over there though anyway and then uh, if we get really excited and energetic uh, once we've done all that then we're going to start moving across here in this part of the field and we'll have uh, lavenders going back here as well i want to try some of the real good english lavenders hitcock and different lavenders they do uh well almost i think most lavenders come from england anyway i think there's like 100 and something different varieties or more but uh yeah i'm really pleased with that so gonna get the tractor away clear up my box and uh get ready for the next job which will be tomorrow.